Protect your privacy online with the best VPN for gaming, ExpressVPN. And visit expressvpn.com slash gillymaster, linked in the description, to find out how you can get three months free. The Bambushka is one of the biggest planes to ever come to GT Online, with a price tag of a whopping $5.918 million if you don't have access to the discounted trade price. In total, with upgrades, it's going to end up costing you about $7 million. And what do you get for this massive financial setback? You get a plane that's not only the biggest in the game, but the slowest as well. And even back when it launched in the Spuggler's Run update back in 2017, you were lucky to last a minute flying this giant paper plane around. The Bambushka deserves to be a beast in the sky, and in this video, we're going to be doing a complete revamp of the plane, and we're going to turn it into a familiar gunship that some old school COD fans will enjoy, and it's no longer going to resemble a flying target in the sky. Now I know the Bambushka isn't based off of the AC-130, it's based off of a Russian bomber, I get that, but the fact is, the Bambushka is the closest thing that we have to a gunship style aircraft, so that's why I'm choosing it to base this off of. Now where did the Bambushka go wrong? Well, I think it's fairly obvious, the Bambushka is giant and travels at a snail's pace, those two things combined make it a very easy target for anyone to attack it, and its armor is non-existent, so if just one person on foot has explosive rounds, say goodbye to your $6 million plane. Its armor is really the only thing that's very wrong with it, because if its armor was done properly, it would cover its downsides of being slow and clunky. The guns do happen to be bugged on it right now, but that's an entirely different story. But instead of just buffing the armor and calling it a day, we're going a step further and completely redesigning the weapons on the Babushka in an attempt to resemble an AC-130. Of course, we're still going to buff the armor on it by a ton to help it survive in today's GT Online lobbies. And lastly, the handling will get a very slight improvement, so it's not as unresponsive to fly. Keep in mind, it's still going to be the slowest and clunkiest plane to fly by quite a bit, but the goal is to make it not as bad as it is now. In layman's terms, the AC-130 has three main guns, the big, very slow-firing one, a medium, semi-fast one, and a small, quick-firing one. The Bambushka right now has two styles of weapons already on it, the machine gun and the explosive gun, but for the main big cannon, we're going to need another one, so I replaced the top cannon with a Kanjali tank cannon, as the tank cannon is the strongest style of weapon that would work for this situation. After that, I went ahead and modified the vehicle weapon seats so that as a pilot, I can operate all three weapon types. And this is mainly for testing purposes. In an actual online environment, I would have it so that you need more players to operate the vehicle's weapons to maximum potential, even though it is very fun using the gun solo while flying it. But back to the main gun, it's not just the regular old Kanjali cannon on top, it's heavily modified. In the audio department, I changed the stock Kanjali cannon sound to the flat gun sound from the AA trailer, and this doesn't do anything to the performance of the weapon of course, but it's just a better sound for a big cannon in my opinion. The next change was to the damage. Normally it's at zero, and that's because most explosive weapons get their damage from the blast radius, which is defined in a different file, which we will of course get into in a second here. But since it's a giant cannon, we gave it 500 damage. And for obvious reasons, I increased the time between shots from 2 seconds to 5 seconds, making the cooldown per shot much longer, as it should be. You probably have noticed the alternate wait time was changed to match the time between shots, and the reason for that is the Bambushka top cannon has two different guns, so if I didn't change that, it would fire two cannons at once instead of just one, and we don't want that. And now getting into the really big changes which define the main cannon, the projectile info. First, I changed the model of the tank cannon to the model of the hunter missile, if you didn't know, whenever a tank in GTA shoots, if you look closely, it actually fires an RPG projectile, but with this change, it shoots much larger missiles to fit the nature. Although it is kind of hard to see in-game. Next is the lifetime value. For projectiles, the lifetime is how long it's going to travel before blowing up on its own. It's essentially the same as the range of the weapon. 0.5 is way too short for our design here, so I change it to 5. And just visualize that for a second, 10 times the range of a GTA tank. The launch speed was decreased from 400 to 175, so it's not going to travel at very fast speeds like the tank shells do in this game. And it also kind of gives it a skill gap because it makes it hard to lead a moving target at a distance. But it makes it much more satisfying when you finally do land that shot from a long distance. Now here's where it gets good, the explosion. Changing the explosion tag not only adjusts the visual effect of the explosion, but it also adjusts the damage behind it, including the blast radius. And after testing different explosion types, I settled on the submarine cruise missile explosion. The visual effect for this one is a bit bigger and cooler looking, and more importantly, the damage and blast radius of the Kasatka missile fits perfectly for a giant cannon blast like this. The final change that was made to the main cannon was the trail effects. I felt that it needed something a bit more exciting. The tank trail effect is literally just smoke behind the projectile, 
I was looking for something with a bit more light on it, and what I decided on was the trail effect from the firework launcher. It not only gives it a more impactful effect, but it also works as kind of a tracer for the cannon, and at nighttime you can really see it traveling to the ground. So those are all the changes that were made to the coating of the main cannon, now let's see it all put together in game, check it out. But we still have two more guns to change, so shifting into the medium cannon now, we modified the explosive bambushu cannon for this one. Just like the main gun, I changed the audio of the cannon, I wanted the medium one to have like a deeper sound to it with more punch, so I went with the sound of the combat shotgun which I think fits the role perfectly. I then doubled the blast radius from 2.5 to 5, increased the fire rate from 1 shot per second to 185 RPM to give it a similar fire rate to the AC-130's medium cannon. Change the tracer from the non-existent turret tracer to the jet tracers, basically what you see when you shoot the Savage or laser guns. And finally, increase the range from 500 to 750 so that it can be used in long range scenarios. GTA 5 still has an issue with rendering surfaces at far distances, so a lot of the time your shots will go through the floor at long distances. Same goes for the main cannon, but as long as you hit your target directly, that doesn't matter. One more thing about the medium guns, unfortunately there isn't a way to give the guns a cooldown after firing 4 or so times like in the COD games, so in the gameplay you see me firing it non-stop which makes it seem kind of overpowered. I would have given it a cooldown after 4 shots if I could, but everything I tried to do in order to do that just didn't work. But anyways, here are the medium cannons in action. And last but certainly not least are the small cannons, and for the small cannons I'm modifying the dual MGs that the Bambushka come stock with. The first thing I did was change them from bullet to explosive using the rogue cannons explosion tag. I gave it the mogul turret sound which sounds actually very similar to the Bambushka dual MG by default so it's not that much of a difference. The damage was also lowered from 250 to 30 because that would be way too much in combination with the explosion damage. And speaking of that explosion damage, that was also reduced quite a bit from 250, 50, and a 2 radius to 30 for both the center and edge with a 0.5 radius. The small gun isn't meant to do a lot of damage or have a ton of blast radius, it does have a faster fire rate though. It went from a time between shots value of 0.150 to 0.1, and just like the medium cannon I gave it the jet tracers because they just look so much better for a gunship turret in my opinion. And to top it off I upped the range from 500 to 750 to match the medium cannons. Unfortunately, the same scenario happens here as well, where I can't give the guns a cooldown after firing them for a bit, so I can continuously fire them, which is kind of overpowered. I wish there was a way to give them a cooldown, trust me I would have done that if I could, but here are the small cannons in game. And combining all three cannons in use at the same time gives you those old school classic AC-130 vibes.
next, let's talk about the armor. In the live game, it has none. You shoot one RPG at this thing and it crumbles to nothing. And it only takes a few explosive rounds to blow it up completely too. So much like some of the other armor buffs, I added the capped explosion damage flag to the Bambushka and modified its weapon and engine damage multipliers from 0.5 and 1.5 to 0.05 and 0.05, which is a very significant armor increase. We're talking a 10 times armor increase from weapon damage and a 30 times increase in its engine damage armor, which might sound insane, and it is because it needs to be insane because of how vulnerable it is when it's in the sky. After this armor buff, it's going to take you over 20 rockets to disable the vehicle and even more than that to actually blow it up. And explosive rounds, it's not practically immune to explosive rounds, it's going to take you way more than you could even carry to destroy it. That being said, that's against people on foot where it excels. If an enemy aircraft has its sights on you, it's still going to go down pretty quick. Not instantaneous, but quick. And in an ideal scenario, the guns on this would only be able to fire at a downward angle. You wouldn't be able to fire the guns into the air freely. That would just be ridiculous. So to other aircraft, it would still go down pretty quickly. Obviously here, the Bambushka can still fire into the air because it's not perfect. It's just merely a concept and a fun one at that. But in game, if the AC-130 was ever added to GTA, it should only be able to fire downward. One last thing about the Bambushka that I changed was the handling. There really isn't anything I could do about the top speed of the Bambushka. I've tried upping the thrust value to massive amounts, and it just doesn't do much for the top speed. And in the process, it just makes the vehicle handle extremely unrealistically, like being able to fly straight up against its weight, which just doesn't feel right with it. The way I went about the handling changes is I compared side by side the Titan handling to the Bambushka handling, and changed the Bambushka values to around half of what the Titans were. And I'm not going to go into the specifics for the handling like I do for the other stats, because the handling is kind of confusing even for me. I don't even know what exactly what half the values do for the handling. I just know that they affect the handling in some way, and that it feels a lot more responsive than its current form with the changes that I made. It's still the slowest and least maneuverable aircraft in the game, but the slow speed complements its gun uses too. It would be really difficult to aim if you were going really fast in it, I feel. But there you have it, the Bambushka resembling an AC-130 gunship in GTA V. Now tell me, would you pay $6 million if you knew the plane was this good? I would honestly pay $10 million for an aircraft like this. No one wants to pay $6 million for this garbage. Rockstar, take some notes please. Give the Bambushka what it truly deserves. If you guys enjoyed the video or found it helpful, feel free to leave a like, as well as subscribe to my channel for more guide and PvP related content. Please let me know in the comments section which vehicle I should rebalance next. Also, massive shout out to my channel members for your support. If you'd like to become a member for some exclusive perks, you can either use the join button or the link that's down in the description. And as always, thanks for watching and have a great day.